In our upcoming August online sale, running from the 22nd to the 29th of August, we have a dedicated session focusing on the Eastern Cape. And the Eastern Cape is very important to me because I was born there. I come from a town by the name of East London. And that's where I was raised, that's where I studied, and that's where I became aware of the artists who had either been born there, studied there, or moved through there looking for inspiration through their art practice. In 1960, Brian Bradshaw joined the Fine Art Department as head at Rhodes University and he brought with him uh, a very distinct painting style, uh, a fusion perhaps of abstraction and realism. And a very early example we have on the sale, this lovely example called The Mountain Cottage and Evening Star. It's an intriguing work because it, it leaves the viewer puzzling over what, what is represented. I find that a very exciting um, thought process to go through. And the other work we have by Bradshaw on the sale is a much later one from 19, probably about 95 or 1997 titled Narmab. A beautiful painting, um, a very uh, primal, expressive work, abstract in, in its core and as founder of the Grahamstown Group in 1964, he, he was interested in art as a, a practice of, of expression without superficial elements, um, a very real response to the landscape. And most of the works that we'll see by other Grahamstown Group artists or the students of those artists feature a very strong connection to landscape, to rhythm, and to paint and the surface in general. Staying with the Nama but moving into a contemporary artist by the name of Ben Kudavides, a very beautiful dramatically lit uh, painting of Kol Manskop, a derelict house on the side of a dune, wonderful sense of uh, rhythm in the shadows of the dune in the foreground and uh, Again, preoccupation with surface, with thick, thick paint, not to the same extent of, as Bradshaw in this work, but definite interest in the surface of the work. Staying with the Makanda artists and part of the extension of the Grahamstown group, we have this beautiful, large and rare painting by Helen Tim. Looking at it from a very close vantage point, it appears that there's sort of a panoply of <laughs> of elements, colour, form and line. But when, when you retreat 10 or 15 feet, the whole work uh, magically falls into place beautifully. So it's, a, it's punctuated by the most beautiful line which, which unites these strong colours. This work is partly experiential and partly imagined. There's a work that correlates very strongly to this one by Nigel Mullins called Fantasy Landscape. And that work uh, shows the topography of outlying areas around in an aerial view around Grahamstown, Makanda. And, and this work also um, partly expresses itself through imagination. Moving on to two other works, uh, the first by Estelle Marais, Medala and Isir Le Mun Boom, showing figural elements, another part of uh, the tradition of the Grahamstown group's painting methodology. And here we have a lovely intimate subject of the gardener seated on a bench beneath this lovely lemon tree. And, and the painting technique here, completely different to what we've seen in Tim and Bradshaw's works, very, very fine mark making and, and very much about the linear and accentuation of that. And lastly, a lovely figural work within the context of the Albany landscape, and it's a Nigel Mullins dating from 1992. And you can see the debt owed to Bradshaw in the rich, thick covering of rhythmical paint brush strokes, and the strong use of coloration. You've got the uh, contrasting complementaries of green and reds playing off one another. That's a very powerful primal um, oil sketch on paper. One of the uh, highlights of the sale is undoubtedly this beautiful tenderly rendered watercolour by George Pepper from 1944 of his beloved New Brighton. And he's captured the scene in such a light and airy, 
way. Um, it carries so much luminosity and freshness. And you see these figures on the street, you see the uh, freshness of the sky and the area, and you actually are aware of how his what kind of process was defined by his drawing. For the tracery and the pencil lines is evident everywhere. So just absolutely thrilled to have a work on paper by George Pemba on this Eastern Cape focus. Moving on from Kerbacha to East London, another major city in the Eastern Cape, we are fortunate to have three uh, prominent artists from that area and starting with Cecil Scottness, some lovely, lively woodcut prints and then of course Jack Lugg is synonymous with East London, a lovely painting by him and then some beautiful screen prints by Norman Catherine and the highlights I've been mentioning all will be featured on the Eastern Cape session of our August online sale running from the 22nd to the 29th of August.